Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Jazz Inc. 1-6 scale Batmobile review. That's right, today we're taking a look at none other than the classic, the retro, the campy Batman TV series 1966 Batmobile. Now you may be thinking, Justin, aren't you a little bit young to know anything about this series and yeah, normally you'd be right, the 60s, not really my era. However, in saying that, when I was a young lad, my dad and I watched this show, this very series, was my introduction to Batman, Robin, the rogues gallery, and of course, the Batmobile. So as soon as this thing went up for pre-order, I was in on day one. And I will continue to do that because I have a deep respect for Jazz Inc. and the work they do. I have popped a link to their website, of course, in the description down below. So that's a bit of background on me and why the heck I wanted this car. Now, as for the car itself, one word to describe it, incredible. This might just be Jazz Inc.'s best work ever ever. The car is nowhere near as heavy as something like the Justice Mobile, meaning it's sturdy, it feels high quality, but it's not going to break your back or, fingers crossed, break your shelf, seeing as though they dialed the weight down just a little. I've been saying that forever, I think that cars don't need to be super heavy in 1.6 scale. I'm glad they listened and they made some changes with this one. Plus, the paint is absolutely stunning. The entire thing is hand sanded, so it's a high gloss mirror finish. Plus, the red pinstriping can't have been easy to do. You've got decals, you've got stickers, you've got translucent sections, and of course, that beautiful metallic silver. Now, being a car, there are moving pieces such as the front wheels. They can turn and they can roll. Plus, the tires are made of rubber. They're a nice, sturdy, thick rubber with some tread sculpted in. And you even have these teeny tiny little tire refill pieces that are made of metal. Now, the car has lights. Of course it does. There are multiple different versions, so make sure you're picking the right one depending on what features you are after. Now, to activate the lights, it plugs in. You have a little remote. Clicking the B button will turn on the front headlights. And yeah, they are super bright. Clicking D around the front of the car will turn on the secondary set of lights, also really bright. And that D button does have another function which you will see in just a second. Now, I do like that the headlights are kind of obscured behind this mesh, and when you have the secondary set of lights turned off, you probably wouldn't even know that they light up. It's very seamless, it's all super well painted. Now, some people might say, Justin, isn't it a little bit idealized, a little bit too shiny? And yeah, you're right. This is kind of, to me at least, the perfect, in air quotes, version of the car. In the series, it was kind of a rushed production. It looked a little bit shabby and nowhere near as glossy as this one does. Whereas Jazz Inc. wanted to make that idealized version, so yeah, it's a little bit shinier, the paint is a hell of a lot cleaner, and as I said, everything here is done by hand. And you can tell, trust me, when you get this thing in hand and you pop it in the display alongside the figures, by the way, we will get the figures out here in just a second, I reckon, yeah, you're going to be suitably happy. Now, back to the lights, sorry for the detour. If you click the C button, the rear lights will turn on to red LEDs, and if you click the D button around the back, the main thruster does illuminate in multiple different colors. It flickers, it moves around, and when you put the flame on, which you'll see, it looks really cool. There is, of course, one button left, which is A, which activates the lights in the cabin. That brings this entire thing to life. Everything starts blinking, it starts flashing, the LEDs are super bright, and they are operating in sequence. Meaning they flash on and off at different times, they're not just all blinking at the same time. I can't imagine any of this was easy to do, but I'm all for it. It looks really cool. Now, the top section does have that bubble windshield all cast in a very optically clear, clear plastic, and you have multiple little details up on top as well. They're all fully labeled, such as the Detect A Scope 
absolutely love it. You can see the light flickering and, of course, a couple of arrows, kind of like a primitive GPS of sorts, because, yeah, Batman has all the latest tech. Now, you also have a ton of detail just around the seat area. The seats themselves are made of real, genuine leather. There's a grain to them, they feel nice and sturdy, and they have been coated. So they're not just raw cowhide or leather, they're nice and sturdy, they shouldn't crack or crease over time. Plus, you do, of course, have the bat fire extinguisher. Now, the doors also can't have been easy to do. They open by simply swinging open, but the main section around the front kind of tucks inside the body of the car. You also, if you get the ultimate, the deluxe version, you get real flocked carpet. Completely unnecessary, but it's something that makes me personally really happy. That's pretty much the entire way I can sum up this car. Yeah, I love it. It's something that's super nostalgic to me. I apologize if I'm gushing, but I mean, just look at that interior. There are labels everywhere, there are multiple little sections lighting up and flashing, plus the bat phone. There's a lot to look at here. Now you also have these swappable little screens of sorts that go in the area that says bat scope. They're magnetic and you have three different options. One that looks like some girls doing the Batusi, which is totally possible. You also get one that kind of has this warp speed look and screen, and the other which simply has the arrows that you saw earlier. At this point in the review, you're probably getting a very real sense as to why the heck I said earlier that this is Jazzing's best work ever. I mean, this cockpit is evidence in and of itself. When you do close the doors, just be aware there are two locking pins that sit in the body to keep the pinstripes aligned beautifully. Now you do, of course, have the mobile crime computer. It's well sculpted with a bunch of red details and around the back a separate antenna. Please be really careful, it feels kind of fragile. When you do close this, give it a nice firm push, it will lock in position. You also have some real fabric bags for what would be parachutes in the show. I don't think they're actually in there, they look good. You do get multiple different options for the license plates. Now they are simply stickers that you would stick over the top of the standard one, and this is the one I think I'm going to go with, for now at least, in the display. One of the coolest features if you go all out and get the ultimate version, the blast effect for the main thruster. It magnetizes in position, it's clear plastic, and it's translucent enough that you can see the lights passing through. You also get the bat battering ram that simply slides in position. Kinda goofy, not really my thing, but it's super simple to slide it on and off. Now, just before we wrap up, this review would not be complete without bringing out the Hot Toys 66 Batman and Robin. Adam West and Burt Ward in their classic suits. Oh yes. This is it right here. Something that's super nostalgic, that's been years in the making. Hot Toys teased this very car. They released the figures, but they said, no, no, no need to make the car. We're just going to hope the collectors collectively forget. But collectors don't usually forget, and we didn't with the car either. Enter Jazz Inc. and they said, we'll pick up the slack, we'll run with it. And that they did. Now, something to be aware of with the Hot Toys 66 Batman and Robin. Yes, their suits are made of fabric, however, it's super fragile. This fabric does like to develop pits and burrs and lumps and bumps, it can look really ugly. So when you're popping Batman and Robin inside the Batmobile, take your time, be very gentle. But when you have them sitting in there, number one, they absolutely fit. And number two, they look incredible. The second time I've used that adjective in this very review, because I couldn't think of a better one to use. This is jaw-dropping. Now, I've gushed a lot. There's nostalgia there. I love the look of this vehicle. I love the shape. I love the colors. I love the size. But in saying that, it's not perfect. Nothing ever truly is perfect, 
Some of the stickers do look a little bit low res, not the biggest deal in the world, but something to be aware of. And the entire thing is painted in high gloss black. That means you are going to have to wipe it down. It's a fingerprint magnet by nature. There's not much you can really do about that. But overall, it's painted beautifully. It's sculpted well, and the details are awesome. Now, as I said in the intro, I got mine directly from Jazz Inc. I was a day one pre-order. I have popped the link to their site in the description down below. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.